All right, let's start this arena run. Uh, I'm going Warlock. What? The worst. This is the worst. The worst card. This is the worst guy. Uh, Dragonkin. It's a three-five. Uh, North Sea Kraken. All right, that's a that's a butt. The nice butt. Shattered Sun, you're a beautiful, beautiful three. Uh, Harvest Golem, you're one of the best fucking mechs in the game. Uh, Elven Archer, you trade for early two one plays. Cool. Um, the dragon. I like Blackwing Technician more than Fen Creeper, honestly. I'm gonna go Blackwing. Um, oof, this is a tough one. Floating Watcher is a fantastic five, though, and a better seven. Um, uh, I want to get the twos out of the way when I can. Arcane Golem's real good. It's a good rush card. Um, uh, in Warlock, Mad Scientist is bad. Voodoo Doctor's kind of always bad. This is just a two, bit, two mana deal, two damage. Sure. Um, I do have one mech, right? Micro machine in arena often just becomes a two-two, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with the mech warper here. Imp gang. Um, I like Anubisoth a lot more than I like fucking Wrath. Wrathguard is always one of those cards that I'm like, yeah, 4-3, turn 2, fuck yeah, that's my stuff. And then I end up playing it, and I'm like, this ends up getting me killed. <laughs> this, this is bad. Uh, Argent Squire is a great one. Um, Emperor Cobra is fantastic. The thing about Emperor Cobra, I'll, I'll just do a quick aside here, that makes it so good is um, Emperor Cobra is never really a dead draw. Like, if your opponent, if you're late game and you top deck it, and they play like, you know, a, um, you know, an 8 8 or something, you're like, oh, beans. And then you just do that. I know I love my wife, but Emperor Cobra is insane. And Dark Peddler is also really good. Uh, I need some chuffed. Uh, okay, yeah, no, that's a Void Walker. Oof, this is a really bad pick. Enhance. Because oh, Mountain Giant is just so bad in Arena, it never ends up leaving your hand. Ever. Like, ever. Ever. It sucks. It's so bad. It's a dead draw early, it's a dead draw late. It's basically just a blank card. Um, especially with my curve where it is, so I'm definitely putting you at the bottom of the pile. South Sea's a 3-3 three, three for 3. Enhancing Meccano can do something later on if I manage to set up a wide board. Oh, man. My anime golem, but I have Bane of Doom right here. Bane of Doom is insanely good. Dread Infernal. Shalom. Uh, hello, Stampede and Kodo. You're a 5. Um, this is probably still... Eh. Playable ones, I have one, two, three. One, two, three, four. I really want more twos. Some of the ships. Um, I have like no playable sixes, and Frost Elemental's fine. Uh, that's a Haunted Creeper. So Haunted Creeper's just fantastic, as far as uh, two drops go. Uh, Draconid's gonna help with my uh, lack of finishing in this deck, which is kind of my biggest problem right now. Uh, I already have one Floating Watcher, and Zombie Chow is just super solid. Gives me another great playable one. Uh, whoa, this is, this is a terrible pick. War Golem. And last thing on Curve, and it's probably going to be the Azure Drake. This deck is super weird. Like, I don't know. We have some end, end game plays here. Kodo's a nice control. Fine enough fives. Bane of Doom is great. That's always overperforms. 
Enhanced Meccano can be a pretty neat play. Shattered Sun is fine. Like, our, I think our threes and our twos are great. And our ones are pretty damn solid. It's more when we get to our back end that I'm concerned, so... I'm probably going to want to play this really aggressively. I don't know. Uh, this is probably not going to be a good one. Yeah, I don't even think I got offered uh, that many spells. That happens, though. That's something you kind of got to expect. Oh, no, it's a bad boy. Remember that time that I said we have a billion playable ones and twos? I mean, I wasn't lying. Maybe I was lying. Not my fucking dad. Uh, we do have coin, though. So... Having a one and two threes isn't the worst thing in the world. And that's just a... It's really good against Mage, too. Because uh, if there are more on, they'll use their hero power. But I doubt it. They'll probably be able to. Oh, man. Look at this synergy. Super good. Um, this turns a little more awkward. I could clear does not scare me. this. Um, turn four is okay. It's nothing special. Um, this would beta ping though, and I'm okay with them dropping their turn four because turn four is my weak spot. I have. I have all the fours in my deck in my hand. By the way, it's two. But if they do live thing, let things live. This could be an extremely good enhancing Meccano. Well, I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> oh shit! One, two, or three things at random. So it's one out of three, one out of three, one out of three. So that was a one in 27 chance. Bueno. I mean, I would have preferred probably double strike, but... <laughs> I'm just kind of taken aback by what just happened. <laughs> I mean, it's worth it for the 1 in 27. That's not bad. Holy Nova? Holy Nova only hits two targets. Oh, that's right. You're a mage, not a priest. Pfft. Moron. Alright, let's let us do some maths. Okay, so follow, you following me here, camera guy? One, two, three, four, five, six, twelve. Off the life tap. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, twelve. Still think the right play. It's 
spreading a little wide for flame strike turn is my concern. The nice thing is if all he has is flame strike turn, uh, he still can't win. I think we've got it. Yeah. They pull something crazy out of his deck. Well check me. Well done. Yeah. Pretty good stuff. One. That was weird. Uh, I managed to draw a curve from a deck that does not have a curve. Yeah, that's a really good concede quote. I I, I agree, Gnome Seven. That's that's good as hell. I like it. <laughs> Checkmate. I'm not owned. <laughs> I mean, it actually is admitting their own, so I suppose it's checkmate. I'm owned. All right, uh, we have a two, three, six, which is not a curve. You asked for it. Um, shall be mine. Hang beans. Uh, two, two, three, six is okay. Um, I mean, not not the six, not the six. That's that's trash. Get out of here. Get out of here, you. This. So, um, we're gonna coin uh, double twos because we have two turn three plays that are both good. And like I said, our deck has to be fast. We can't, we can't win with this deck if we go to late game. I really don't think we can. What to do? What to do? We have. Pretty good early game, pretty good middle game. Our late game kind of sucks. Um, see, so yeah, I'll just Because I don't have any pirates. Finally, a second chance. Oh man, <laughs> what is with all these heroes? What the? That's all right. I'm just gonna keep, gonna keep playing three healths. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Oh, that's a peddler. Holy shit. <laughs> oh! Yes! Triple trade on this is the thing. So many must I'm just gonna make sure nothing can be pinged. Just gonna play a completely unpingable board. Can't believe I got a pirate. <laughs> That's, that's great. Weapon. All right. I can see the validity of that. Um, Jesus. Um, but I don't really have a second part to that play. I'll bait a doom here and see what we pull. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 
Never even got to see his move. <laughs> That's a shame. Well, we'll uh, Blackwing tech. I like that. And, uh, maybe zombie chow anyway. Uh, we let the peddler do his thing. Yeah, you you can't you can't um you can't play around flame strike. It, it's just one of those things where in this deck in particular, playing around flame strike is a death sentence. Um, I really need to dig for early plays here. Well, fuck you too, Hearthstone. We'll see, because, like, neither of those fours are particularly good. I'll probably just play Imp on Curve and then Coin Bane of Doom, whatever he plays. Zombie Chow does his job. That's fine. That's a shame. <laughs> I mean, I did just get a legendary last turn. I can't complain too much. stealth minion so this is really good now um draw is fine uh, enhance could overperform well, I have a really wild wide board Stealth taunt. What's happening? <laughs> it's time for a little blood. Um, 
Yeah, we ping, see what he gets. Oh man, blood imp. What was it? He used to be super broken. I can't remember what it was. I have returned. Uh huh. Uh huh. Huh? That's uh. That's an uh, insanely good card. <laughs> and I don't have silence. Well, I see why you're two and zero. Oh. Because <laughs> you have one of the best seven drops for Arena. Congrats on that. I am going to put shit in the way um, and not let you use your thing. And uh, keep drawing shit and hope I can find a frost elemental or something to keep slowing you down. Was that off a of tomb spider? I didn't see it. Oh, it was. Oh my god. Oh, he's a beast. Oh, fuck. What a beast to be offered. Insanely good mulch. Oh, that's a bloody good mulch. That might be GG. That's... You joke about that, but um, one summer, uh, as far as like me be having opinions on mulch, um, one summer I was working for an aerial photography agency uh, over in Northwest Indiana, and my primary role, well fuck me silly, um, my primary role was, uh, damn, this sucks, uh, <laughs> I can't even keep my thoughts straight because this blows. Um, my primary role was to do color correction and color balancing for all of their like pictures and make sure that they uh, when I was doing that actually where I learned my love of bread and butter pickles on roast beef and butter sandwiches but um, while that was happening I also, um, they needed someone to do garden work, and I was done with, like, my session, basically, of working for them, like, it was the end of the season for photography stuff, so I just kind of was like, hey, I can do the mulching for you, so I actually spent, like, two weeks doing nothing but mulching, laying mulch down in, like, a huge garden. It sucked. <laughs> it sucked a lot. I'm trying to think if I can even pull anything that would win this. Stampeding Kodo would be really nice. Of course they aren't pirates. Of course they don't set each other off, that would be good. Threaten lethal over the top of their lack of lethal. Power flows through me. 
or do I just heavily develop the board? <laughs> Yeah, really ship's cannon should be either a mech or a pirate and it would probably be pretty solid then hmm. All right, do you believe the dude? I think that's a baseball I don't think I have anything that answers that. Time waits for no one. Yeah, I don't have anything to take care of that. I don't think in my entire deck. Actually. Not dead yet. <laughs> well played. I mean, yeah, dude, any direct damage, and you've won this. Be a wrath. Yeah, like that. That's enough. Yeah, the Malorn early on just broke me. <laughs> broke me like a tiny baby. It happens. It happens. If all of life was 12 and 0, then nothing else would be fun. I mean, we were at 2 and 0, so you have to expect anyone there is in like. They have beaten their last two opponents, meaning they're 50% 25. They're in like the top 25% already. I will fight with honor. Your soul shall be mine. Uh, I'll shuffle the Meccano. All right. Also, I'm okay losing to a druid in arena. I don't like losing to paladins in arena, which he's gonna coin shield the mini bot, because fucking of course he is. Mind if I roll need? Or loot hoarder. An interesting well choice. I greet you as you Unless he got like a Tyrion and he's just digging for a Tyrion, in which case. <laughs> and um, I actually like this out front. The sun well. Thing that sucks is, oh fuck me. They aren't pulling out cards from Arena, which is bad. Like, I'm sorry, Blizzard. It's bad. You should pull cards from Arena. Like, I'm sorry, Muster for Battle and fucking Shielded Minibot and a bunch of other ones. Like, the big nerf Paladin's going to be getting is hopefully they will be offered more mediocre cards. Also, I love, um, if you haven't watched it, I recommend it, um, Amaz did a, uh, video about, uh, his proposed nerf ideas, more or less, 
and they were they were pretty interesting i liked a lot of them um in particular i was a really big fan of his proposed nerf for alex straza and for knife juggler and knife juggler it was like it's a big nerf but at the same time it still makes it do what it wants for aggro so it makes it still a card that would see play but not just in every single two slot of every deck. And that is, uh, instead of one damage to a random enemy, it would just be to the face. Just no matter what, it is face damage. I think that's great. That's smart as shit. I think that's a great plan. Like, just take away what is far and away its biggest advantage, which is just you play it and you play like muster for battle or even since that's being taken out let's jesus um that's a premium epic but um let's even take that out of the equation let's since that's getting rotated let's pretend that doesn't exist um still even with that being taken out of the equation there's now the one that's five to summon five one ones so if you have that on board you just have that tiny boy on board then that's automatically um possibilities. it's basically an arcane explosion for free which is is insane like they ask anybody like how good would you say it is how how much would you pay for a fucking free arcane explosion <laughs> And they would say roughly an arcane explosion. So it's just getting a free card and it's it's baffling. Don't worry, loves. The cavalry's here. Like there are so many things that mix together that make that card completely crazy. Oh. Fuck off with this. For duty. Fuck off with this. Oh my god. What the fuck is this deck? Arena. It is an arena draft. We are in arena now, so no one knows what anyone's deck is. Not repentance. Not noble sacrifice or redemption. And I keep him from getting the avenge. God damn you, you get to get that Avenge for free. Son of a bitch, I can't do anything about the Avenge. Oh, Avenge is insane. The order here. If I hit this and it Avenges the Murloc Knight, that gives it five attack. Probably best to just do this. Not Avenge. We are still taking that shit the fuck out of here, cuz. And it's not Sacred Trial. It is Sacred Trial. Sacred Trial just takes a while. That's fine. Yeah, make him have it. Buzzing at Kings isn't enough now. Yes. 
And that's why face was the place, baby. You do have a better chance of winning jousts when they aren't yours. I don't know if you were joking or not. I'm sorry. Jokes don't go well through tests, but um, just mathematically, uh, assuming even decks, which are pretty common in arena, a lot of people get like middling curves, you lose <clears throat> a grand portion. Like, let's say you have the same amount of, you know, everything up to fours. So, like, I mean, how many sixes and sevens do you realistically draft? I, I like this this train of thought. Let's talk about this, because this is something that always comes up. Um, like, my deck's a little light, but I only have one, two, three, four, five, six, fives. I have three sixes, a seven, and a nine. So, assuming that everyone goes for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven total, which, um... <clears throat> like that still means the rest of your deck is either lower or going to draw a draw and since the draw is the thing it ends up just being huge because the draw is the much larger portion of your deck like lower or a draw is much bigger of a section than your bombs you only have you know a couple cards in the back end like if we're talking more than five i only have five of them which is about right i mean it's a little low maybe so other than that you're gambling but you're gambling with bad odds because if you match up you lose so I mean, it is an important thing to explain because a lot of people here are new to the game. A lot of people just come to watch the game, and that's fine too. I'm totally cool with that. I hope I get people to play Arc, uh, you know, Hearthstone. If not, if people just come and hang out and listen and, you know, learn a thing or two about math and how card games work, that's fine. I am, in fact, like a teacher and a trainer and all sorts of stuff everywhere I've been, so I don't mind educating. I would not want it to do it as my main job, but I enjoy it. Uh, Imp Gang Boss is a premiere enough of a three that I'm going to hold on to it. Oh, man. I'm putting this down because it trades more favorably with a flimp. So this will hit once and then hit a second time for two damage. Uh, it also trades with any two ones very favorably, which are the mainstay of one drops. But if he does play a flimp, the flame imp, which is like the I best one drop. You will bleed. I will... Uh, you know, then it'll trade for that too. Whereas this will trade for the two ones, but will not trade for the flimp. Ooh. Guard. Not really a good card right now. <laughs> you aren't. Get out of here, you pud. Oh gosh. I mean in all fairness we have a great turn three. I'm not I'm not worried about that. Our turn three is absolutely stellar. Um I think I'll pop Divine Shield there and uh force him to make the trade. Alright, there we go. I mean it's only one damage. So, like, it wouldn't have really mattered, quite frankly, <clears throat> however that turned out. But, um, it is a good thing to have. That's bad news. 
That is extremely bad news when we don't have a card in our hand. Yeah, we still trade it. Even though the Kodo will answer it really nicely, I would rather have some some bodies on board. That card comes out like really early. It's very good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I hate when I play a game against an opponent and my only real response is like, good play. You're, you're doing a good job over there, buddy. Just wanted you to know. Um, I don't like Anubisoth because he can clear board pretty easily at this point. Then that leaves the Anubisoth and the Anudasoth, which I'm not a fan of. What I will play is a spiteful boy. We will trade one to one again. If it, I don't like it, I don't like this. But what do you got to do? Oh shit! Uh, what's the pal machine? Oh, is it still on rare monsters? I need to wait for it to go to... Yeah, and so he's forcing me to make the trade, which is very intelligent of him. Till I do this. Come on, Divine Shields. Are you real? Piss. So. Yeah, no, yeah. That was a mistake. <laughs> Oopy daisy, I suppose. I wasn't planning on playing Creeper. Um, if I was planning on playing Creeper, yeah, I wouldn't better do that. Whoa, that's good. That's real good. Damn. Damn, that's good. Damn, that's game. I don't really have any spells other than Bane of Doom. And I don't think Bane of Doom would do a dang thing. Bane of Doom wouldn't do a dang thing. Yeah, Bane of Doom wouldn't do a dang thing. Um, so many possibilities. Always think through your turn before you concede, though. Draconid, Stamp a Kodo. Five on board. Rent lethal. I can take that out clean. That still leaves six damage. And this is the best board development. It always feels real bad to play those early. Yeah, there it is. Oh, man. Oh, I don't want to go 50%. <laughs> Oh, I want to get at least five on this. In all fairness, this deck is not exceptional, but I want to go five. I can. I want to believe. We're at three and two. Basically, just imagine, um, you know, his deck was just a better version of my deck, but with spells. That's kind of the thing. The spells are what's breaking me right now. Take this. Yeah, I'll shuffle down the Dread Infernal.
Okay, so we don't have like a solid double turn on two. We don't have a solid double turn on three. Uh, Elven Archer, she is much better for her one damage than she is as a one one. Like a one one doesn't really do shit. Um, like the biggest thing this might do is bait a blade, which isn't really a thing I want to do. So. <laughs> Yeah, basically I was uh, like kind of checking for a ringleader, more or less. I'll that comes down to. Kind of been an awkward, awkward hand. All right, need to take that without any copies. Um, that's a spider tank. <laughs> that's, that's a spider tank, man. What are you going to do? Spider tank is good. Good card. Um, I don't really like either of these plays. It's kind of the problem here. Just gonna take out the mech warper regardless and I'd rather I don't really have a good turn four what other than the guy at least it forces a blade charge on that and that's why spider tanks are so good <laughs> They're just super effective at all sorts of things. Um, and this is okay. Trades fairly effectively with their... Um, and I'm actually going to do this. Um, it'll probably bait a blade charge to here, and then the swing. Over here, and then the trade here. Be optimum for them, which is... Seven damage into a dragonkin, which is. I mean. Then I have coin six, which is gonna be a dread infernal, so hopefully they leave their stuff at low health. It's kind of what I'm banking on here. Oh, the backstab. Uh, free spells. I think it's a Cobra and a ship's cannon now. Yeah, I mean, they just, they are played spider tank, uh, Yeti, and then a shield for the Yeti, and then a free spell. So, like, yeah, they're... Ew. <laughs> Oh yeah, no backstab used to be busted. Still pretty, pretty fucking ridiculous, but it used to just be flat broken, just broken, broken. I really don't want to slow down the game that much more. Just be that, and then the blade. Unless they play an assassinate, in which case I will. Very sad boy. You know, actually, the best move there might have been to freeze the, the the rogue. Try and force a double trade. In retrospect, that might have been better. I mean, I get the five damage to the face, but... Can't realistically rush for the Draconid. It would be nice to bait an early... Not Fuck me. <laughs> Dread Infernal doesn't do a damn thing. War Golem.
All right, yeah, there's the assassinate. Uh, reminder, by the way, that that's why BGH needs a nerf, because assassinate is five cost for unconditional removal, um, and that's it, nothing else. Uh, and BGH is three mana for unconditional removal of something that's actually dangerous. And uh, after that unconditional removal of something that is, in fact, actually dangerous, it then also leaves you a 4-2. Like, the difference between Assassinate and BGH really isn't that much. Other than the fact that BGH costs two less. <laughs> which is a lot. That is a difference. Mind if I roll need? And you're serious with this uh, Trog getting, getting the buff here. You're real. Alright. Well, fuck me then. I'm dead. I can't believe you just uh, got a Tinker Sharp Sword right now. I am very dead. I have four health and you have a four bla blade damage damage blade in your hand. Well, it's been uh, fun. Ish. We must cleanse the sun well. I got a ten set. I have lethal. <laughs> oh boy. In the words of Critical, who is not me, but could be. Well, I guess I'll just go fuck myself up. Yeah, I guess I'll go fuck myself. Well. That sucks. Um, yeah, no, I, I really didn't have any premium Warlock cards other than, um, Dark Peddler. Let's look, actually, before I, uh, I got a Dark Peddler, a Bane of Doom, which is very good. Uh, I got a Imp Gang boss, uh, a Floating Watcher, which I can cons I consider that a premium. It's a thing that you know can get out of control. Dread Infernal, which is pretty great. Did I get any other? Sp Did I get any spells? That deck have no spells. That deck had no spells, other than Bane of Doom. Did I get offered any spells? Or no. Still got 45 gold, baby. <laughs> and a GVG pack. Oh boy, the first unplayable pack I've gotten. Hooray, out of like 10 runs. Well, let's open these cards I can't use. How about it? What? <laughs> oh yeah, they offered me like four cents demons. All right, love that dust. Hey man, if it was five Dr. Booms, I'd be fucking ecstatic, especially if they're all gold. That's five legendaries. Pet your sweet Bippy. Also, guess who has enough for another legendary? Uh, but yeah, I'll uh, show the deck one time before I take off and we'll review and see if there's anything I kind of want to cycle out and try something new. Uh, Arcane Blast is great. Um, some people don't think it is because they don't understand that Shock is a playable card, especially in an aggro game. Um, two damage for one. That's great. I'll take it. That just takes out a two cost minion every time or up damages and takes something else out. Um, Arcane Missiles is fine. I mean, we saw how well that did. Mana Worm, probably the most switch outable card actually. Um, but did win a couple games. Uh, Zombie Chow is just always good when it comes out on turn one. Flame Cannon's great. Frostbolt's great. Unstable Portal. <sighs> eh. I almost feel like a Fallen Hero might do better for me than an Unstable Portal. I'm always reluctant to play Unstable Portal. Every time. I might even be willing to put in a Kirin Tormage. It might be worth putting in a Kirin Torm. No, I'm not making a Deathwing for one deck. No. <laughs> no. You don't make a card to answer one deck. No. 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 Um. No. Um. Maybe Kirin Tormage, actually. I don't like 
like the idea of a Karen Tor Mage in this deck. Oh. Oh. Um, but yeah, Unstable Portal is okay. Um, but and, and it's very good in general. But like, especially in such a heavy control, I kind of need specific stuff usually. So I'd rather have something I know will work out for me. Which Kieran Tormage probably will. I usually like that'll give me a um, you know if I have my ice block out, that means I get my ice block turn, which is crucial as you all saw. My my ice block is huge. Um, it gives me a 4-3, and then also on top of my ice block, which is really good. You know, like, I think that might be, um, that might, that might work really well for me in this. Um, are there any fours I could switch out? Like, because Ethereal Arcanist could be really solid, but, like, Antique I need for the control help. Azure Drake I need just for draw, quite frankly. Ethereal Conjurer just always overperforms because it's a 6-3, so it trades up, and then it gives me a spell with 3, which is... I don't think I've gotten a bad one off of that. Um, Lotheb is obviously crucial. You saw how much that slows down people. Blizzard is huge. Emperor is really good when I get him early, which I don't think happened tonight. Uh, Reno, I cannot pull out of the deck. Flamestrike, Dr. Boom, Ragnaros, all of these are super important. Um, the thing is, like, Molten Giant is a win condition. If I had a Pyroblast, I might swap in a Pyroblast for the Molten Giant. Maybe. What's the gimmick of this deck? Um, it's to kind of beat back uh, a lot of the aggro meta and the secret paladin meta. Um, the big thing is, since there's so many combos right now, like, there's so many combo players that, like, just put a bunch of shit in and just, like, fire off all at once to get lethal. Um, I ice block that, and then I play a Reno. And then I copy the Reno. And then I clear up their board. And then I have 30 health followed by another 30 health. Followed by another 30 health. So, it just... Stop. It just stops people to end their tracks. Like, it, it's kind of a slow deck. But it's really fun uh, when it works. Having experienced Reno once before, yeah, that kind of put, just puts a damper on everything you're doing. I have played a triple Reno one match, and it was extremely good. <laughs> it was good and That's cool. Very rude. I also what are got, the stats on Reno? Just curious. I know it doesn't six. really matter. He's a 4-6 for six, six. 6. Like, I mean, it, That's not bad. It's bad. Like, it, it's a 5-mana stat line, though. Like, it's a, five, it's a bad 5-mana stat line. Okay. I'll play it. But five. with the effect. But the effect is amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Especially if you ice block right before it, yeah. And that's what I do, yeah, is I ice block and then Reno and then Echo of Medivh to put another Reno in my hand. And then they try and get me down to lethal and then just say, sorry. <laughs> um, the other thing about this deck that I've been thinking about constantly um, is kind of thinking... How much of this do I have to pull uh, when Black Rock Mountain, or you know, when everything shuffles out? It's Zombie Chow, which which is a hit, you know, but not a, not a huge one for this deck. Mad Scientist, Flame Cannon, uh, Flame Cannon. I have to pull out, which I could replace with Dragon's Breath, maybe, maybe just a Polymorph. That's gonna be one of the harder cards. Oh wait, Flame Cannon is yeah, that's GVG. Um, that's gonna be one of the hardest cards to swap out. Polymorph Factor, uh, Flame Cannon. That's an extremely solid card, yeah. Yeah, um, Frostbolt in Mad Scientist, so that's... This one's easy, just a different one-drop, like, it really doesn't matter. I have enough one-drops, that's fine. Um, Mad Scientist will probably be replaced by Fallen Hero, like I thought about that. Flame Cannon, that's honestly gonna be a hard one. That might just be a Snow Chugger. I mean... I mean, consider also we haven't seen all the cards coming in whispers yeah, yet. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm like thinking ahead, you know, if I can. Um, yeah, yeah. And then is is Echo? Mech? Uh, no, Echo. I want to say is TGT. Like if I click on it somewhere. It, it remember it's behind the text. That's a gear. Yeah. Yeah, it's a GVG. Alright, that's fine. I can just put like a duplicate, or is duplicate also GVG? 
That's Knox. Wow. Beans. Um, I'll think of Rip something. this deck, kind of. Nah, I mean, it, it still, honestly, is fine, especially because of some of the combos are being nerfed. Um... Um... What else? Um, BGH, depending on how it gets nerfed. Um, I like Amaz's idea that it'll be nerfed to costing five instead of three. Because guess what, motherfucker? It's still totally playable at five. Like, as it is right now, it's hard removal, which is one of the best things in the game, uh, plus a four two, which is a three mana creature. So fucking what the fuck on that so i'll probably keep it in even if it's five because if i didn't mention bgh is really good bgh there's a reason he's an auto include which is bad you don't want staples in your in your format uh yeah there shouldn't be a card that you just go well put that in uh flame waker still just like every good. time and that's what dr boom and bgh are which is why i'm excited to see him leave yeah that's uh, it's also kind of like if i'm playing uh if i'm making a deck to play in like ranked or whatever Generally, I go, like, ooze. I just kind of go, yeah, yeah, ooze. Antique Heal Bot will be shuffling out. Um, that one's kind of, I'll see what they put in. Because um, there, there's a lot of interesting stuff I could switch out for Antique Heal Bot. Uh, Lotheb will be Maybe out. Put in Corrupted Heal Bot. No. Um, <laughs> Lotheb will be out, which, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, no, Lotheb. And I agree. Lotheb is bay. But the thing here is, is that I don't really mind. Because you know who else runs Lotheb? Like every deck runs fucking Lothab. Because <laughs> Lothab is 5-5 five, five for 5. Your opponent doesn't get to do their move. It's incre It's so dumb. Lothab is such an important card. Especially, like, Lothab is one of those cards that the better you know the game, the better Lothab is. Because, for instance, for me, if I'm playing Druid, if I'm playing against a Druid, I mean, um, okay, turn 8. Lotheb. Okay, they can't do Force of Nature, Savage Roar. Oh, did they put an Emperor Tharsian out, which is also like an auto-include and probably like 50% of decks? Well, if that was up for one turn, then I play Lotheb on turn six. <laughs> and they don't get to do their move. And I delay them for a turn. Seriously, that's like, why Lotheb is it, so good. Yeah. I like consider also a Paladin. Like, okay, is it turn eight? Well, I play Lotheb, and then they can't like Blessing Kings anything on the field. Yeah, like you can. Like, be, I can actually leave minions out. There are so many moves that Lotheb enables, and Lotheb is it's just such a good card. Like, and this is one where I don't mind Lotheb, and I think he's a good card, but um, <laughs> right now he is a little too staply. Like, I think he's a neat effect. I really like the idea behind Lotheb, but it's a little too good, and everybody knows yeah. it. Like, everybody a knows the you have a Lotheb. As the chat says, Lotheb is just play Lotheb. Your opponent doesn't get to kill Lotheb this turn. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> or like your opponent has to trade into Lotheb. Yeah. Um, yeah. Blizzard, I have to leave in, but that's fine. Uh, Emperor Tharsian actually gets to stay because he is, in fact, Blackrock Mountain. Uh, Reno gets to stay. Yeah. Hey, Reno. Uh, Dr. Boom, I'll trade out with something that's more fun. Like, whatever. <laughs> Fucking who cares? Something that's more fun to play. The Doctor Boom. There'll be a cool mage legendary. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Or maybe I will play Mesh Dormo because fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could play Chromagus, which would actually be pretty good in this deck late game. Maybe. Pause in Malagos. I could put in Malagos and make any of my cards extremely good. Um. Yeah. But in Mech Junior. Could put in Ice Howl. Ice Howl! A card that people thought was going to be really good, and then it turns out, not really. <laughs> it turns out he's just a threat to creatures. Like, he's a pain in the ass, but he's not really broken. Anixia would be fine. I'd put it in Anixia. Shit, I'd put it yeah. in North Sea Kraken. Um, Mountain Ooh. Giant is weird because a lot of people project Mountain Giant for nerfs, and I think they're wrong. Um, I think they're going to nerf a lot of things around Mountain Giant and maybe give nerf, uh, a, well, okay, Malagos plus the card that gets, uh, double spell boost would be awesome if it could hit face, but then it would be broken. 
Um, and it can only hit minions, though. So, yeah, I mean, like, you could do, like, 11 damage to a minion, which is cool, for one. But that's... You want to be playing that earlier. It's a shock. You need to be playing it for control. Um, Mountain Giant, though... Uh, I could tell Amaz way overdid it on his call for how to nerf this because he's a priest player and priests suffer really hard against Handlock, which is the deck that runs this card. By the way, Mountain Giant is running all of like two decks. So... Yeah, Mount Mountain Giant is a really weird card to play because... It's a build around. Yeah, it's it, a build around. Like it's only running Handlock and like, I guess Reno Lock maybe we could see it. That'd be about it. Yeah, because like if you pull it late game when you're top deck warring, you're not gonna be able to play it. Yeah, like it's, it's and a, if you it's a very pull it card. early, what I could see because what Amaz had is his projected thing, which is because he's a priest player and can't deal with handlock well. Is uh, I mean, obviously he can. He's a professional player. He's world class. He can do it well. But like he has a bad matchup against it. Is what I'm saying. Like he probably has a really bad win rate comparatively to being like 90% on you know whatever. Um, but Mountain Giant, he said make it uh, cost one less for each other minion in your hand. But that just makes it unplayable. <laughs> that just straight up pulls Mountain Giant out of every deck. Like no one would play it then ever. You would take a card from. Good and playable in a very specific circumstance to not played ever, which is a very blizzard thing to do, but I hope they do not. Um, my projected nerf, if they do decide to go with nerfing uh, Mountain Giant, will be make the default cost 14. That's a huge nerf. <laughs> like, the whole point of Mountain Giant right now in handlock is turn one pass, turn two tap, turn three tap, turn four Mountain Giant. Because at that point, you have eight cards in your hand, it costs four. That's baffling. Or you have nine <laughs> cards in your hand, and it costs four. It's fucking crazy. But the thing is, you already are dropping your turn one, two, and three. Which is important. Like, that's big. That's not like a small thing you get to do. And that's if you draw your mountain giant. Like, that's a pretty big deal. Um, if they made it 14, that would make you drop your turn one, two, three, four. So you'd be on turn five before you get to play this. Um, now, Handlock still draws cards like crazy, but it's, you know, that would kind of push Mountain Giant into a mid-game play as opposed to a consistent turn four. So, it would still be, you know, iffy kind of. I wouldn't say iffy, but it's still like a thing people might go for as opposed to... Um, you know, having nerfs it to only other minions, because then that means you could be on like turn nine, and in a handlock deck which has a lot of spells, it would still cost like nine. I, that's think, not, I think the major that's point. Unplayable. The major point is it's only really sees get. It only really sees play in like two decks. Yeah, that's enough to say it doesn't really need a nerf. Yeah, and the biggest problem is. It could, it could use a nerf, because it is very good, but the nerf needs to be gentle on it, as opposed to something like Knife Juggler, which is, do you have a two drop in your deck? It's probably Knife Juggler, unless you need something else very specific. Because Knife Juggler I mean, is just insane, and I really like the nerf to that too, which is make Knife Juggler still a great card and still a prime two cost, but only for aggro decks, which is after you summon a minion, deal one damage to opponent or to opposing hero, so that it still gets the it still gets the aggro thing done, and it's still a fucking premium aggro card. Because you know you summon that, summon another thing, summon another thing, summon another thing. That's three damage on a three. That's that's a three two that does three damage to face, plus possibly more. That's insane. And then can attack itself. Yeah. Yeah, like that's incredible. That's fucking awesome. Anyone would play that in an aggro deck. The fact that it can hit minions too and clear your board, fucking yeah. This is actually, if you you want to know a fun fact about Ty and Hearthstone, first cards I crafted was a pair of knife jugglers. Because I just immediately looked at these and said, I want these, immediately. I was like, these is, this is fucking crazy. I want all of these. Like, I can only have two, right? All right, cool. I'm going to craft both right away without thinking. Like, I didn't even need to. I looked at like all these cards and I'm like, oh, that only costs what? Like... A hundred to craft a rare or something like that. It's like a hundred to craft a rare. 
I was like, can I craft? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I was like, can I craft more than two? Like, shit, I, I want all of these. Um, Just thinking yeah. about uh, Mountain Giant again, if the whole issue is, well, Handlock gets out too early, I mean, all you would have to do there is, well, I say, like, all you have to do there is increase the mana cost by one, but then that kind of kills in any other deck as well, so never mind. Well, no, that's what I was saying is, I said make it cost two more. That's fine, because then it pushes it back a turn. You could even make it cost just one more and it pushes it back a turn. Um, mm -hmm. It's still a great card then in that deck and it's still totally playable at 13. It just um, removes its incredibly busted play, which is cool. I'd be fine with that. Um, let's see. There are some other cards people were talking about. No, the way the... Um, since someone's asking, because th there's a lot of confusion around the whole standard thing right now. What's going to happen is it's a lot like every other card game that goes in far enough. Um, you can play them, but what there's going to be is when you hit play like this, there is, instead of saying casual and ranked, there's going to be, um, it might be after this, it might be before this, but there's going to be standard and wild. And there will be ranked for both, and there will be casual for both from what I understand, um, which is good. And basically, the standard format is going to be uh, your core set, which is, you know, the very beginning. So your classic and your basics. And then um, the very, the very two. Oh, this is actually what it's going to be. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so, um, yeah, you'll be able to do both. But, so it's going to be that and then the two newest sets. So... Yeah, so you'll be able to play at this point on release. You, as soon as the next set releases, you'll be able to play classic and basic, which is your core set. Those are sticking around forever. That's why people are talking about like, how are we going to change the base cards to make sure we have design space and can make stuff fun? You know, how how can we allow ourselves to make new cards? Um, one such example being, why does Rogue have a black lotus? That's another story. <laughs> <laughs> Why does Rogue have a fucking black lotus? Why was that a thing they said okay on? Um, but um, yeah, you'll you'll be able to play uh, anything you have in Wild, and certain stuff in um, certain stuff in Standard. And I think you I think you might need to explain the black lotus comment. I will. I will. Um, but yeah, so the standard is just going to be basically uh, Blackrock, or not Blackrock, it'll be Noxramus and GVG, the very first two sets, um, will not be playable. Uh, in standard, you can play them in wild, and they will still come up in arena, but in the standard format specifically, it's only the two latest released, like, blocks, which is the latest expansion and adventure. So, what it's going to be is the two latest, once they release uh, the new expansion, Call of Cthulhu, or Whispers of the Old Gods, or whatever the fuck they're actually calling it, um, it will be the latest two adventures, which is Blackrock Mountain and League of Explorers. Both of those are good. Um, and then the Grand Tournament and the Whispers of the Old Gods when that comes out. And then your core set, which is just the shit you always have forever. So, if you want to craft, that's a good thing to start on. Um, but then... And then every year, they'll probably rotate out the back year. And again, those will all be fine in Wild, which is essentially Vintage. But Standard keeps updating, so you can kind of know, um, you know, what's going to be uh, in the stuff. And it mixes up the format, it keeps it from getting stale. It's a big problem right now, you know, kind of like, like I said, this deck that I played today in Constructed, that went 8-3, and three, and went 8-1 and one until I played two weird decks, but it went 8-3. and three, you know, just rocking it up ranks, is because I built it specifically to beat, like, the top five decks that I see played the most in ladder. Um, you know, and I, like, worked off someone else's list and kind of, like, made modifications here and there. But it works really well for that. I think it was called... Something Demo? It's a Greek player um, who built this deck, and I just did some minor mods on it. Like, Echo of Medivh wasn't in his, and I was really baffled by that, because Echo of Medivh is insane in this deck. Maybe someone should tell him. Um, but, um, yeah, so, like, uh, you, if you know it, it gets too locked down. It's like vintage and magic. So, back to my comment about why is there a black lotus? So, the thing is, 
There is a Black Lotus in Hearthstone, but it has a it has a clause to it. That's it's fucking preparation. Zero cost, get three mana. It is specifically to play a spell, is the restriction, but it is a Black Lotus. Make no mistakes. It is a free it is a free spell that gives you three mana. That is a black lotus. Basically, by this existing, they cannot give rogue any spells that are too good. <laughs> like they just can't let rogues have any spells that are too good. Because preparation yeah, would break it. <laughs> like if they gave rogues what, what is the What's the cost of the uh the oil? Uh, Tinker Sharp Sword Oil is slipping my mind right now. Hold I up, I have one. I'll check real fast. Um, it's four. I have two. I have two. Don't worry, okay. buddy. I, I ran a blade oil, <laughs> oil oil work for a little bit. It's gross. But yeah, there you go. You so, can yeah. So if you have another one. card, and then Tinker Sharp Sword, and it just makes yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, and that's uh, someone said like it's exactly why every rogue spell is good but not backbreaking, except for Tinker Sharp Sword Oil, which is why it it made a deck. <laughs> like it is so good, it made a fucking deck, and especially when you take into account things like the other thing that I think, and also it makes a play like turn four sprint is baffling, or turn five, turn six, turn seven is um, it, it's crazy, like. There's no reason if you if you have preparation and sprint in your hand and you don't have some crazy play, you preparation sprint every time. You get a four mana draw four cards. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Um Yeah, the RNG for Hearthstone is kind of an interesting thing because a lot of it is either you can manipulate it if you're clever, or um or on top of that, if you if, you know you just kind of want to play with it, you can just get good outcomes. Sometimes you get something crazy good, sometimes you don't. Um, that's actually another reason that uh, 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 Patron Warrior was nerfed, is because Patron Warrior took as much randomness out of the game as possible. So basically the only randomness you had to deal with was your opponents. And it drew incredibly consistently, had no randomness, was consistent, and it had a very high skill ceiling, but the problem was there was no counter to it. So as soon as you were a good player, if you drew okay, you won, which is why it got nerfed, because it was just too fucking good. Like, a deck that in casual ladder gets like 80% win rates all the time against every deck is dumb. Uh, but yeah, so like other cards that are going to be nerfed, uh, we everyone thinks, and Amaz and I agree upon on this one, uh, Blade Flurry. Uh, I talked to my buddy Justin at work, who's like a major MTG dude, has been doing it for ages, really good player in general, um, and I just told him off the cuff, I was like, yeah, you remember how there's weapons and you can like buff weapons, and I explained like Tinker Sharp Sword Oil, for example, and I was like, yeah, you just create your weapon, Tinker Sharp Sword Oil, and then you hit them in the face, and they're like, I was like okay, yeah, that's, that's fine. And then you break it with Blade Flurry, and he's like, yeah, okay, and then it wipes their field. I'm like, also, it hits them in the face. And he's like, oh, wait, what? Yes. He's like, oh, so it gets to hit twice in one turn with all your buffs and is a field wipe. Because you spent two more mana. Yes. And let's just remind, you know, oh. the chat here. You make, a, you make a dagger on turn two, and then on turn three, if you have preparation, you can do this on turn three. And, like, it's not necessarily something you'd want to do, but it's the reason that cards like Tinker Sharp Sword Oil are so insane. Because if you have, like, Assassin's Blade or something up, which has four charges, so once you play your Assassin's Blade, it's hanging out for a while. So you just Assassin's Blade, prep, Tinker Sharp Sword Oil, Tinker Sharp Sword Oil, and then that's five of your mana. So, again, keep that in mind. Preparation, which triggers the combo, by the way. So if you have a minion out... You can just prep Tinker Sharp Sword, Tinker Sharp Sword, that's five mana, and then you hit them in the face with your, you know, nine attack weapon, and then you break it, that's 18 to their face, plus you have two minions out, or one minion out, that also got plus six attack, that is supposedly ready, and so, I mean, that's just right there, that's 24 damage, and that's not even like a hard combo to think of, that's not even a full mana combo, 
There's all sorts of stuff. Um, basically, what the problem is is that Blade Flurry gives weapons Wind Fury, and they already can swing right away. So that probably needs to be uh, nerfed a little bit. Um, all it needs to be nerfed is, yeah, just destroy your weapon and deal its damage to minions. To enemy minions. There you go. And then Blade Flurry is a good card because you get a really good strike. Ooh. <laughs> and yeah, that's the problem is uh, exactly what uh, Morphine Mike said is it, it doesn't help uh, the Acidic Swampers because a uh, rogue can just make one. Like again, remember how I said that whole play I just read out to you? was prep, sharp sword, sharp sword, and then blade flurry, which is again a whole that's all of seven mana. You know, that's that's seven, because prep is zero and minus three. So that makes the first one cost one, the second one costs four, so that's five. And then the blade flurry is two. So that's seven. And hey guess what you can do before that turn? You can just make a sword for two. <laughs> Like, that's a thing you can do at any time as a rogue. Like, even though that is a bad version of it, that's still... <laughs> that's still 14 damage to face plus 6 on a minion. That's still 20 damage, which is a shitload of burst for not that much. But yeah, it, basically them just having a... like. And, and the nice thing is Tinker's is getting rotated, because that is a GVG card. Yes. God, that card is infuriating. Yeah. Um... But yeah, people people get really mad whenever cards are nerfed because it's their deck. Um, Vicus and I were reading over this article about a guy being like, Why Patron Warrior being taken out of the game? Which it wasn't even. People still run Patron Warrior. It just isn't, it doesn't have a one-hit kill combo. You know, like it doesn't have an OHKO, so it's not busted anymore. It's just still pretty good. Um, but the nerf to that, to the Warsong Commander... Just changed it from being, you know, broken to something else. But this guy did a whole article about how, like, it's bad because it takes, you know, it was the only deck that wasn't random. I'm like, that's why it's good that it's gone, man. Like, the whole point of Hearthstone is that they're, like, you're complaining, and the way Vickis put it was the best, which is, you're complaining about randomness in a game. <laughs> you're complaining about randomness in a game where your deck is shuffled before you start. Like... <laughs> Um, and yeah, that's the big thing too, is the game is premised around not being able to interfere with your opponent's turn so that the matches go, you know, fairly quickly. Um, burst is a really, pro is a big problem there. Uh, burst is an issue on that. Um, whereas magic, you have counter spells, you have instants. So like, again, like someone just plays a million buffs on something. They spend all 10 mana, you know, doing a whole thing, making a big creature and getting ready to hit you in the face. And then you go... In response, I Doomblade it. I spend two mana, and you just wasted your entire tenth turn. Fuck you, and then you win the game. But Hearthstone doesn't have that, so Burst is a really big problem to deal with. Um, and a deck that ignores RNG is antithetical to the way the game is played. You're exactly correct, Gnome 7. So, yeah. Yeah. Um... And yeah, if you didn't know, by the way, uh, this is something that I didn't know people, you know, I, I mean, I, I assume no, not everybody knows it, but uh, Channel Fireball, uh, which is a really good broadcast, is actually like a joke, a play on words around uh, the actual Black Lotus, because Black Lotus actually gave you a one turn kill. Um, and what that was, was you drop the Black Lotus for zero, and then you drop a mountain, because that's your land per turn. So, you crack the Black Lotus, you, you sacrifice it, you get three green mana. Then you spend two of those green mana to play a card called Channel. Now, what Channel does is Channel lets you, for one turn, convert as much of your health, of your 20 you start the game with, down to... <laughs> you put it down to one so that you get 19 mana. And then you have your one spare mana from the three you got from your um, from your uh, Black Lotus. Yeah, it just it just kicked for a second. Yeah. Um. But yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll finish explaining it and then I'll probably be going. But um, yeah. So okay. Play Black Lotus, get three mana. 
then you use two of that, and it's green, to play channel. You turn 19 of your 20 health into mana, so you're at one health. You have 20 mana because you spent two of the three to play the channel. So now you have 20 mana just hanging out. You play your mountain, which is one red. You tap your one red and play a card called Fireball, which is one red and X. And X is however much you want to play, you pay for it. So you pay 20 for X, and it is deal damage to target, you know, creature or player. So you just do 20 to your opponent's face. Opening turn. Before they can play a card, before they can play mana, before they can do anything. So all I need, if you draw a Black Lotus, a mountain, which a mountain you can put a billion of in your deck, it doesn't matter. So if you draw a Black Lotus, that... A mountain, um, channel, and fireball. You have four cards. If you draw four cards in your hand, which again, you can go seven, mulligan down to six, and blamp. You win the game. Turn one win. Awesome. Fantastic. Never give free mana. <laughs> that is just an always bad idea. Like, Innervate really does need a nerf because Innervate is a baby Black Lotus. <laughs> like, um... There's a card called Lotus Petal that was is still considered incredibly good and playable, but not busted, which is you play it for free, you sacrifice it, and you get one free mana. That is still good enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Force of Will is the only thing that stops it, which is why Force of Will is also like a required deck in Vintage and Legacy games. Um... But yeah, so that's why that channel fireball combo, that's what that one really good podcast is named off of, because they are a channel who talks about magic, which is a game where a card called fireball was used with a card called channel as a very famous early uh, one hit kill. One turn, one turn KO, which again, oh yeah, by the way, here's a neat function. You can type in new and just get those fucking notifications out of the way really quickly. Fun fact. But yeah. Yeah. So that's uh that's fucking going straight to 15 from 20 pretty quickly like an hour and a half and then a really bad run of arena because I got owned. So, till next time, uh thanks for hanging out. I'll catch y'all later. <laughs>